Hi, I'm Pamela Lalone Mann, and I'm a teacher in the Developmental Studies Department, English, at Lone Star College, Kingwood. This week, we're going to be discussing editing and proofreading. Our objectives are to learn the differences between proofreading and editing, and to learn editing and proofreading tips. Proofreading and editing are important because your reader expects accurate writing, well-researched facts, clear ideas, strong arguments, correct formatting, correct use of mechanics and usage. Picture this. There you are. You just finished writing your paper. You're tired. Your brain is tired. Your eyes are tired. Even your hair is tired. You and your paper need a rest. Step away from your work. Have a snack. Sleep for the night. It is very difficult to begin editing and proofreading immediately after writing. Rest. You'll do a much better job at editing and proofreading. Editing and revising improve your content by improving the quality of your writing, deleting unimportant information, and making stronger arguments. Note, the mechanics of writing and usage are not the focus during the editing process. Proofreading is checking for mechanics, usage. Mechanics are the conventions of print that include spelling, punctuation, capitalization, and paragraphs. Usage refers to the conventions of writing that include word order, verb tense, and subject-verb agreement. Content is not the focus during proofreading. Step one of editing is to edit your opening. Is the purpose clear to the reader? Does the reader know why you wrote the paper? Does the first paragraph include a clear thesis statement? Does the opening touch briefly on the major points that will be raised in later paragraphs? Does the opening paragraph make the reader want to continue reading? Step two in editing is to edit your body paragraphs. Does the body of the essay form a structured line that supports the thesis? Does each paragraph have a topic sentence that indicates its overall main point? Does each paragraph make a single point? Do all paragraph details support or explain the topic sentence? Are there any irrelevant sentences or details that should be removed? Step three in editing is to edit your conclusion. Is the reader reminded of the thesis and the main points? Is there a well-developed closing discussion about what the essay has proven? Is the reader left with a lasting final thought? Step four, editing sentences. Now that you think you're finished with the content of the essay, Get to the point. It's time to face reality. You probably have sentence errors in that paper. How about some tips that will zero in on those errors? Shall I point out the obvious? Since you are now a veteran of the Teaching Lab seminars, you have a wealth of information available on the Teaching Lab LibGuide. Go to the LibGuide. Look at Week 2 Sentence Fragments. Review that paper we gave you about the sentence fragment. How about some more help with sentences? Go to the LibGuide and look at week three, comma splices and run-ons. I can point you in the right direction. Six ways to correct run-on sentences. Add a period and a capital letter. Use a semicolon. Use a semicolon plus a transition word and a comma if the two independent clauses are related. Use a comma and one of the fanboys. 
Add a dependent word to the beginning of the first independent clause, which makes it a dependent clause, and a comma. Or you can add a dependent word to the second independent clause, making it a dependent clause, in which case you need no comma. Use what you learned in the teaching lab and use the resources that are posted on the Kingwood DS English Teaching Lab Lid Guide to improve your writing skills. Use every tool available to become more successful. Step four, find a reader. Ask someone to read your paper. A friend, a classmate, or a relative will do nicely. After that person reads the entire paper, ask, can you identify my thesis? What is my focus? What am I trying to prove? Can you identify the three main points that support my thesis? Is my message clear? Is any part confusing? Is there anything that's off topic? Now what do you do? You step away. Proofreading is extremely tedious if you do it right, and you want to do it right. Walk away, eat dinner, stroll on the beach with your sweetie, Editing and proofreading should never be done all at once. You should break up editing and proofreading into different sessions and allow your mind to clear before embarking on a new part of the process. Revisit your paper when you're rested and ready to take on the task. Proofreading. Mechanics are the conventions of print that include spelling, punctuation, capitalization, and paragraphs. Usage refers to the conventions of writing that include word order, verb tense, and subject verb agreement. When you proofread, it's best to print your paper and read your work aloud. This is one of the best ways to catch errors and awkwardness. Pronounce each word slowly and clearly. Read dramatically. Do not rush through proofreading. Step one, spelling. Do not rely on your computer's spell check. Examine each word in the paper individually by reading carefully. Moving a pencil under each line of text helps you to see each word. Read each sentence backwards to pick up spelling errors. Step two, left out and doubled words. Reading the paper aloud can help you make sure you've not missed or repeated any words. Read your paper aloud as if you were reading to 100 people. Do not miss a word. Do not read what you think you wrote. Read what you actually wrote on the paper. Step 3. Use the LibGuide resources. Time to visit the Teaching Lab LibGuide again. Go to the LibGuide. Look at week four, comma rules. Look at week six, pronouns. Remember we gave you the six comma rules? Review those and edit your paper or proofread your paper. Look at your pronoun antecedent agreement rules. Step four, words to avoid. Some words to avoid, a lot, and also, anyway, finally, first, second, etc., firstly, secondly, etc., good, I think, I believe, etc., in conclusion. These words do not add a great deal of meaning to your paper. They're very repetitive. They are used too much. For example, the word good we use to describe everything. Proofread your, work, your paper carefully to make sure that you haven't used these words. For example, Mark Twain and also Will Rogers were humorists. If Mark Twain was a humorist and Will Rogers was a humorist, weren't they both humorists? It's not necessary to say Mark Twain and also Will Rogers. Just Mark Twain and Will Rogers. It's redundant. The word and and also mean exactly the same thing. Another example, firstly 
He tested his theory, then he learned it was right, then he announced his new discovery. A better way of saying that would be, after he tested his theory, he learned he was right, so he announced his new discovery. Now we're almost finished. Let's do some final checks. Use every tool in your toolbox. Look in the LibGuide for handouts that help you edit. Keep a personal error log. Use your editing and proofreading checklist. Use this error log to help keep track of your personal errors. Each time your instructor notes an error on your work, add it to your list. Avoid making the same mistake twice. Learn from your mistakes. Here's the self-editing and proofreading checklist. Use it to review your work. The checklist guides you through the process. Print the list so you can check off your progress. If you follow the checklist, you will be assured that you have completed every step. Remember that the checklist is an Excel file. You can change the items to suit your instructor's requirements. Save the document to your computer. Click in any box to change the content. Make it yours. Thank you for attending the seminars and from your presenters.